today's video, we're going to be talking about the changes that happened in an EverQuest expansion, not unlike the video we did on Planes of Power. Now, the thing to consider here, though, is that for this video, we're actually going to be covering two expansions. One of these was the little expansion that could. It had an outsized impact on the game. The other was an expansion that if Planes of Power didn't make you quit, this one might have when it was first released. The expansion we're talking about today, the Lost Dungeons of Norath, and Gates of Discord. So the fact that we're doing two expansions this video instead of one does not mean that they're not as important as a singular expansion. In this video, we're going to talk about two major changes that happen in the game, as well as some general changes that happen alongside those, and then finally end today's video with a look at some of the, the items and quests you may want to look into. The first of the ma two major changes comes with Lost Dungeons of Norath, and this is a theme here. Our two major changes are both going to originate with Lost Dungeons of Norath and be a little bit refined with Gates of Discord. This one is going to be instancing. Instancing, we'd already seen a little bit. Notably, the end game raid zone for Planes of Power was an instance, but now with Lost Dungeons of Norath and with Gates of Discord, Instancing is no longer just for raids. Lost Dungeons and Norath's entire concept was built around instances. It was, in a sense, a hidden expansion, as it made little change to the visible non-instance world of the game. I remember being shocked by this because while you'd had some instances before, never an entire expansion of just instances. Lost Dungeons and Norath brought with it group and raid instances, something that continues in Gates of Discord. In some ways, this increased the game's accessibility. It allowed for you to begin a group on your own schedule and let you move at your own pace without conflict with others. This, like porting added in Planes of Power, is a flashpoint for the EQ community because that friction was essential to how the game was. It began to shrink the world of Norath in hopes of improving the quality of life. The other major change, which also came with Lost Dungeons of Norath and continued and was expanded upon in Gates of Discord, was Augments. Augments were an incredibly consequential change in the game, and they continue to be important steps in gearing throughout the rest of the game's history. As they grow in power in subsequent expansions, including Gates of Discord, they move from min-maxing to absolute necessity. Some of the best augs in these early expansions were always locked behind long quests or raids. That changes a bit later, but that's for another video. But the main thing to take away here is that you now had another way to gear yourself. While the stats may initially seem small in comparison to the on item stats, the augments still added another avenue for you to customize and continue to equip your character even after you filled every visible slot. Think of it like when they added the charm slot but on steroids. Let's let's go on to the general changes that happened in the game. Well, we'll start with Tipped. Tipped is an instance in Gates of Discord. And in Tipped, there are some very hard-hitting creatures. And this actually brought about a nerf to Enchanted Charm, because now you had damn near a truck running through the zone, destroying things. It became very overpowered very quickly. And that was a theme that started really with Gates of Discord is things hitting very, very hard. Now, if you look, you think back, think back to Lucklin. Well, Lucklin and even to an extent Velius, one of the ways that they increased difficulty was to increase the amount of health that what any any creature had. Well, in Gates of Discord, you still had health as, a, as an issue, but they really amped up the damage. And amping up the damage made the game faster in a lot of ways. Now there is a rumor that's gone around for, for years at this point that when Gates of Discord was released, it was tuned for level 70, but they did not have enough time. So they released expansion early, meaning that we still had level 65 as the max and the NPCs were tuned to level 70. In Gates of Discord, you also had an increased strategy expectation in both raids and in groups. This is where I think that it became more and more needed to have real-time communication with people when you're playing instead of just relying on text communication. Thinking about, for example, the end game raid of the expansion, you had a fight where you had to balance four individual copies of one raid target. And if you got a certain amount out of balance, you would then fail. 
there was essentially a hard and rage timer. So communication became very important, but it wasn't just raids. It was in groups too. If you went into tips expecting it to be like lower guck, you were in for a really bad time. But we go back to Lost Dungeons and Nora. There's another major change that we saw, but it was kind of the prototype for a lot of things that would come later. In Lost Dungeon of Norath, you had points that you earned, which you could use at a vendor. You got these points by going through the dungeons in Lost Dungeons of Norath. This, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, was essentially the first version of alternative currencies that we see in almost every expansion in EverQuest in recent memory. This was a way to reward people with items without them having to draw. It kind of softened that RNG a little bit and it spread the loot around a little bit more. Now you can take this however you will. Like some people may think that this hurt the spirit of the game, but I do think with, with Gates of Discord and Lost Dungeons of Norath, we start to see a very a seismic shift in the game. So if you still want to play these expansions, there's a couple things that you should know about before you start, especially if you plan to raid or if you plan to get the most out of the expansions and take some items from them forward into future expansions. We'll start with the Crag Beast Queen, giant lizard that really can mess you up if you try and take it on yourself or in a single group. The Crag Beast Queen has several very useful items for multiple classes, like Clicky Haze for melee, and it's a raid mob that can be handled by a very competent two or three groups. Killing the Crab Beast Queen alone is not going to get you the items. They are quest items. So this is going to involve going to other zones like Uqua for drops from the trash and some pure group zones like Tip. These items are powerful, but they're not easy. You will still need to be part of a raid to get these items and likely a raiding guild unless you get lucky with some pickup groups. But the fact that this can be killed with, you know, as, low, as little as two to three groups is noteworthy. And the fact that these items, a lot of them, will extend long past Gates of Discord if you are on progression servers, it's worth looking into. Speaking of worth looking into, breakdown in communication, kind of like what happens multiple times while I'm trying to record a video here on YouTube, is a truly epic quest that spans the entire expansion. And it's one you need to be ready for and you need to be a little crazy to do. I actually did not do it. I avoided it. I am, it sounded awful. The end result of the breakdown in communication quest is essentially one of the best augs you're gonna get in for a long time. But this is gonna be one of those quests where you will need to coordinate with your guild because the culmination of the quest is the last fight of the expansion, the last raid fight of the expansion. And there are multiple other raid targets throughout. So there's a ton of different steps where some will be by yourself, some will be with groups, some will be raid targets. And our last item here for Gates of Discord is going to be an easier one. This one is gonna be referred to as the Goats of Kuvik. So they will drop 90 HP or 90 mana augs. These are very powerful augs at the time. They'll also drop armor molds, excluding the breastplate and the legs. But these are doable by a strong single group in era. Now these are not easy. So when I stress a strong group, I mean a strong group. These are not gonna be easy things for you to just roll up to with your pickup group and get some raid loot. Our last two items are going to be both tied to Lost Dungeon and Norath. The first is going to be one that you will all get as soon as you really flag yourself for Lost Dungeon and Norath, the Adventurer Stone. The Adventurer Stone is an interesting thing because you will get it and it will have no stats. But as you go through the dungeons, all the dungeons in Lost Dungeon and Norath, it will continue to gain stats and it will become a very powerful AUG. What makes it so powerful, you might say? I mean, it's it does have, you know, 10 all stats, 10 all resists, and 100 HP, and mana, and etc, etc, etc. But to me, what makes it the most powerful thing is that it works on the charm slot. These charm slot AUGs for a while are pretty rare, especially as powerful as this one becomes. So it's one of those, if you enjoy the Lost Dungeon Nora, or if you can at least tolerate them, it's probably worth doing. Speaking of worth doing, though, there are augments in the Lost in Genora that really you don't see repeated for a long time. And these are skills that have plus 15% to casting skills. Ones that, which is equivalent to plus 2.25% mana savings. This is huge and perhaps one of the most important things to go after if you're looking to have items that will last a long time in subsequent expansion. Most of these are gonna come from raids. So again, it's, it's, the the really important chase items are going to be coming from raids it's it's not like getting a pre-nerf circle of shadow 
Well, that's all I have for you today. I, these two expansions were very consequential in the history of EverQuest, even if we didn't know it necessarily at the time. Sometimes they have come up as negatives in, in the, the history of EverQuest. Perhaps not as loudly as, say, Planes of Power, which saw the exodus of a lot of people and continues to be a stopping point for many who play the progression servers. But these still set up a lot of things that will continue to be the new way to play EverQuest. If you have anything else to add, please, please let us know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like down there. It helps out the channel a ton and lets me know that these kind of videos are something that you enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day.